Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. And you are taking a live look right now over at New York City, where earlier this morning, more than 50 people were arrested as NYPD stormed the Gaza War protester encampments after the schools warned those protesters they needed to leave right away. They were given ample warning and told that any of those protesters who remained at the schools in those encampments would be arrested. We are waiting to find out more about charges and whether any of these folks will actually spend time in jail, spend any time behind bars. A lot of questions on that. When we hear back from the NYPD, we will make sure to let you know. But those encampments were located at the new school and over at NYU. Now, more than 2,000 people have been arrested nationwide amid these Gaza war protests that are happening on college campuses across the country. We're talking coast to coast. The Associated Press reporting at least 46 times since April 18th. Arrests have been made during demonstrations at 36 schools. More than 200 of the arrests were at UCLA in LA. There were also another 300 at Columbia University and the City College of New York in New York City. I want to talk about all of this here, so let's bring in Richard Goldberg, a senior advisor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. No problem. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first off, I just want to get your take here. As you look at some of the videos that have come out this week showing campuses like Columbia University, UCLA, what goes through your mind as you're looking at those videos? Well, I think important to cut through a lot of the chaos uh, on the top of it and start looking for certain indicators uh, that really are problematic that should worry Americans, should worry Congress uh, and uh, the executive branch. Uh, we're seeing Hezbollah flags. We're seeing Hamas paraphernalia. We saw a green headband of Hamas. I think uh, at Stanford's been reported of the FBI. Uh, Northwestern University, somebody wearing a sweatshirt with a Hamas personality on it, one of their terrorist leaders. Uh, we've seen other sorts of indicators of Hamas influence uh, in these protest movements. Maybe not the kids you're seeing on TV all the time, but the organizers who are starting this. We're also seeing a major logistics network supporting this. It didn't just pop up overnight and start organically spreading. Sure, the crowd starts increasing with young kids who want to be a part of something, and they think this is the right thing to do. This is their moment. This is their 1960s. What they don't realize is that they're participating in something that's been created and curated uh, by a large network that has a lot of funding behind it, that is pushing very radical ideas, extremist uh, ideologies uh, that are not just anti-Israel, anti-Semitic, but ultimately anti-American. And I think getting to the funding source, the logistics source of all of this has got to be a key priority for the federal government because a lot of this has crossed state lines. We've seen violence, harassment, intimidation, violations of federal civil rights laws. And that means there is a federal hook here to have an investigation. I want to talk about the right to protest. A lot of the protesters have said that is their God-given right to be out there and to protest what matters. But there is a difference between the right to protest and hate speech, right? Yeah, it's not just about hate speech. I mean, hate speech is still a speech that is covered by the First Amendment. What we're talking about is in the context of a college campus that is uh, subject to uh, Title VI, federal requirements for federal funding and ensuring that you do not have a hostile environment or discriminatory policies towards certain minority groups, whether they be black, uh, Hispanic, uh, Asian, and in this case, Jewish. Uh, and the question is, are universities allowing these groups that perhaps are outside funding, outside organized, partnering with uh, radical student groups on campus, some of the faculty we've seen involved as well as leaders of, of these uh, groups on campus, creating this hostile environment for Jews, where you're not just talking about speech or protest or a column in the daily uh, newspaper, you're talking about intimidating Jewish students on campus, harassing them, making them go underground, feel that they can't even show that they are Jewish on campus, uh, trying to uh, harass, intimidate, and sometimes actual physical violence uh, targeted against Jewish students, Israeli students, those who affiliate with support of Israel uh, as uh, being from a Jewish background, and of course, the Jewish institutions on campus where we've seen the Hillels or the Chabad's on campus be targeted as well. 
that's where you're moving way beyond a First Amendment debate. And you're talking about a Title VI conversation of whether or not the federal government should be providing funding to a university that tolerates that kind of anti-Semitism. What does it say to you that these protests have gone nationwide? I keep saying it, but they're coast to coast, everywhere in between at this point, on all kinds of major college campuses. We know we saw this kind of explode, so to speak, on Columbia University's campus. That is where the video on your screen is coming from. You could see the damage that was done as those protesters did pretty much take over a building in that location, police eventually arresting them. But what does it say to you that these have spread nationwide to college campuses? Well, there's two important phenomena, I think, that have evolved over the last 20 years. Number one, uh, the Hamas influence networks uh, did not go away. We remember the indictments of the early 2000s of uh, things like the Holy Land Foundation case. Uh, those networks uh, have reorganized, uh, stood back up, and increased in influence and power across the country. And so there's clearly a national support network to organize uh, and provide logistics that needs to be brought down. The second piece, though, is the embedding of that Hamas influence network inside this intersectional culture that we've seen pop up over the last decade, especially on college campuses, but in the far left uh, in general. And so what they've done is they've embedded themselves as a cause that the far left needs to adopt. And so suddenly you are making bedfellows of far left radicals with Islamic radicals on campuses. And whether these kids understand the kind of ideologies that they're preaching, that they're adopting, what the slogans they're chanting actually mean is unclear to me. I think some of them do and some of them probably don't. But the people who are organizing this, who have strategized about how to in, indoctrinate these kids, get themselves on college campuses, uh, have paid people likely at these campuses ready to organize this, have their faculty members inserted into these campuses who support this ideology or members of these organizations, this is the real problem we face. It's twofold. There's a Hamas influence network that needs to be investigated, and we need to address the fact that they've embedded themselves into this far left culture. If you could speak to the protesters, what what message would you give to those protesters right now? Well, what I would probably do is I would say, you wanna celebrate groups like the Houthis? You wanna celebrate groups like Hamas? You wanna talk about the Islamic Republic of Iran? You wanna have a Hezbollah flag? Do you even understand the religious and ideological doctrines of these groups? Uh, do you know how they treat women? Do you know how they treat LGBT? Do you know how they feel about the United States? Do you know what happened to you if you walked into Gaza today uh, wearing all of this paraphernalia, waving your flags of free Palestine? You'd be taken hostage or worse as well because they don't really care. Remember the people who lived on the Gaza envelope who were massacred on October 7th, the people who were taken hostage on October 7th and remain hostage were largely peace activists. People forget that. These are people who were looking forward to the day where they could make peace. They oppose a lot of policies of the Israeli government. They thought they were too hostile to the Palestinians in Gaza. Hamas didn't care about that. They butchered them, they butchered their children, the women, all the same. And so understand that when you think you're dancing and singing and putting rainbow flags up for free Palestine and intifada, you are embracing a culture of hate, destruction, and death. And you think that might be something fun on a college campus, but in the real world, that is one of the most dangerous things to the United States and our allies. Is there a problem with anti-Semitism in the U.S.? Is that a problem overall? It is. It is, unfortunately. I mean, I think what we've seen is the Corbynization of the United States. Uh, for many years, we looked at Europe and we saw the rise of anti-Semitism, particularly with the growth of the Muslim populations there, that brought with them a lot of uh, antagonistic views uh, towards Israel and towards Jews, starting to influence the politics of Europe, a lot of anti-Semitic incidents, uh, uh, physical violence increasing, we think of places like France over the years. Britain, we've seen the explosion of anti-Semitism, but not just from the these Islamic radical communities, but also just from the far left. And so that's why I say it, the Corbynization of America. Jeremy Corbyn, of course, for those who don't know, was the longtime leader of the Labor Party, uh, he had adopted uh, all of these types of ideologies you're seeing right now on the college campuses, really embraced Hamas, quite literally. 
uh, and uh, defended uh, this type of anti-Semitism and adopted as part of his core thesis, his doctrines as political leadership. He was thrown out as leader of the Labour Party after losing an election in which anti-Semitism was a core issue in Great Britain. What we've seen happen is that same far left strand that Corbyn led in Britain is the, is now the mainstream far left brand in the United States. And they carry those same views of support, of collaboration with Islamic radical movements, whether it's the Houthis, Hezbollah, or Hamas. And it should really scare a lot of us because it has no basis in their progressive ideology and it is antithetical to all of us in our American values. All right, Richard Goldberg there, senior advisor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your views to kind of break all of this down here. Is there anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? No, I'll just say I hope Congress intervenes. Uh, if the administration won't, uh, I think uh, they have the power to uh, request documents, uh, uh, haul people before Congress. We are starting to see universities make appeasement pacts uh, with these Hamas camps, Northwestern University being the first, Brown University we're seeing, others might follow, uh, hearing about Rutgers uh, out of New Jersey. So the sooner Congress starts uh, subpoenaing documents, uh, understanding what is going on with these negotiations, uh, with these encampments, I think the better, and making the presidents and the board members uh, sit before the American people and answer to why they are appeasing this type of anti-Semitism. All right, Richard, thank you again for taking the time to be here with us. I appreciate it. You bet.